And are you experiencing tree troubles in your life? Lucky for you, Frankie Flowers is here to help. So Frankie, people love their trees. What are some common issues though that come up with trees? Number one issue is, you know, some columnar maples that are back here, they're well suited to the space. The number one issue is a lot of times people plant the wrong tree in the wrong space. And if that big shade tree all of a sudden starts to root into the side of your home can cause big problems. But there have been several problems over the years that trees have seen. Everything from emerald ash borer to longhorn Asian beetles to what's called now the spongy moth, which used to be called the gypsy moth. Oh, I do remember it with those moths. But... Here's the thing, we've had diseased trees on our property before. Um, it's not always obvious. So how do you tell when a tree is stressed out and when it's a situation where you actually have to have it removed? What should you be looking for? First thing you should be looking for is the leaves on that tree. So the leaves are an indication that leaves for a tree are like the eyes to your soul. You know, they always say that your eyes give you the uh, indication of your health. It's the same thing with the leaves of the tree. So if we start to see that leaf turn a little bit yellow, if it's dropping a little bit earlier in the season, or even if we're seeing some discoloration, that's all signs of stress. Then what we have to do is to try to figure out what that stress is coming from. Is that stress coming from a disease? Is it coming from an insect? Is it coming from maybe some construction that you've done in the area where you've disturbed the roots overall? Once we can determine what the stress is, then we can then fix the stress. Or what we can do is just say that tree is diseased, a little bit old. Maybe even the insect problem that it has is one that's going like the ash trees. Unfortunately, we've been having to remove. Then what we do is make that situation whether we're going to remove the tree and or not. Okay, so if you've decided this tree needs to be removed, uh, how do you replace it? And should you be replacing it in the exact same spot? Okay, when it comes to tree removal, before you go to even think about removing, if you're going to be looking and you're looking for some insects, a reminder that insecticides are always for insects and fungicides are for disease. A common uh, disease that you're gonna see on maple trees is this black tar spot. It's a black spot that you see on the leaf and it's really not gonna harm the tree whatsoever. It's just unsightly. There's also something that's called null and that null is something that's unsightly too. So just because it looks stressed, make sure that you know what it is. Now, for removal of a tree, these guys here are not that big, so no problem, I can remove them. But when those columnar maples start to get really big, they're gonna to get to a stage where if I was trying to remove them and I was to cut that tree wrong, it could actually fall and cause damage not only to my home, but to my neighbor's home as well. So a lot of the times we need to bring a professional, like an arborist that will come in and will remove that tree safely, and then also will remove the stump. Because if you don't remove the stump, what'll happen is my grass there that's half cut because my battery ran out, what'll happen is that I'll start to get mushroom growth coming through my lawn. Because as soon as you start getting decaying roots on a lawn, you start to see mushrooms start to pop their way up. Do you understand how badly Frankie needed to tell the viewers that the lawn was only half mowed because his battery ran out? It was killing you, wasn't it? You, you had to say something. It was. I had to because my son Gavin was using the power tools yesterday because he's really into drills and everything else. So he forgot to plug the battery in. So I came back to cut the lawn because I'm like a single dad right now trying to get it all together. And then there was no battery. It's okay. It looks good. Listen, the only thing I noticed was that your grass is green. It looks like you're in Ireland. Like, your grass is beautiful. So don't worry about how long it is and the fact that only half of it's been mowed. Okay, so the arborist <laughs> comes, because that's what we did. We had an arborist come. They check out the tree. They tell us this is the issue with it. No, it can't be salvaged. It is dead. They helped us remove it properly. Now, we want to figure out what we can put in its place. Should you be asking this arborist sort of which trees would thrive in your space and getting it, you know, professionally planted? It's always a good idea to kind of get some good in information about what tree to plant because sometimes, let's say that you thought, oh, I love walnut. Mm -hmm. Well, walnut trees can actually uh, toxify the soil. So what they'll do is actually nothing will grow underneath walnuts. The other part too is really what's the purpose of that tree? A lot of the times we, sometimes you're putting trees in for aesthetics, but for this house here, it faces south. So what I'm looking for is not only privacy on this tree, but I'm also looking at for to shade the front of my house. Yeah. By doing that, shading it, it's gonna actually reduce my air conditioning costs. So the purpose will really kind of allow you, and then the disease and or insect that you had that problem. Can you plant in that same spot? Sometimes you may not be able to plant in that same spot. And then based on your property as well, do you need a tree in that area? Because other trees could have already filled in because we always plant trees when we're in new residential areas and then everything grows. And then all of a sudden, when we start to open up some of the trees as they start to die out, 
then we really can have some more light that's brought in. So not always are we going to replace a tree, but you should always try to because these guys here help us breathe easier. They sure do. And finally, Frankie, just how do we make sure our trees don't get diseased to begin with? Inspection, you know, take the time to smell the roses as you go out there. But one of the easiest things that you can do to really make sure that a tree doesn't have a lot of stress is in spring, take a look for deadwood. These are some dead stems that I just trimmed off these guys right here. By pruning, maintaining, fertilizing, and watering, the best thing you can always do is that deep and frequent watering. If we're going through a period of drought, going out there and soaking your trees so we put water down deep into the surface will give the help. The number one killer of trees is stressful summers and periods of drought. It's not insects, it's not disease, mm -hmm. it's water. And water is life. So a reminder, if a tree's under stress, give it some water. Okay, and I love that shirt, Frankie, with this tree shirt. It's so good. Remember, you can always find more gardening tips up <laughs> on our website, cityline.tv. Frankie is going to be back a little bit later to talk about how to deal with bullies in the garden.